Hi, my name is Dean Williams, and I'm the director of an organization called Formerly Convicted Citizens Project. And uh, Formerly Convicted Citizens Project is primarily a public policy organization whose mission is to eliminate barriers to reentry for people with uh, past criminal records by advocating for public policy change through new legislation. Uh, this is a, an extremely important issue because we have so many people that are formally convicted in the city of Pittsburgh that need job opportunities. I run expungement and pardon workshops at two workforce organizations called Mon Valley Initiative and the Urban League of Greater Pittsburgh. And we've seen at least 700 people at those workshops. And primarily the people come to the workshops not so much because they want their records erased, but they're looking for job opportunities and feel like the only way that they may possibly be able to get jobs is to have their records expunged or pardoned. They really don't have a clue as to how difficult it is to, to uh, obtain a pardon or expungement, but the main issue being that they're looking for job opportunities. So six years ago, I was convicted of uh, charges of position, uh, excuse me, uh, possession with intent to deliver. And I ended up doing a two year sentence uh, called state intermediate punishment which allowed me to actually go through programs and gave me an opportunity to sit down and reflect on my life and the things that I was doing wrong and the things that I needed to do. So actually my situation really worked out for me because I was diligent and uh, quite frankly, I changed my life and gave it, gave it to God and just, I, I allowed God to counsel me through his word and through the spirit and it just, it just put me in the place uh, in the place that I'm in now, which it, it provided a fantastic opportunity for me. So a lot of times in the in the workshops that I'm giving, I, I make sure that I speak to people about my journey, about the things that I've gone through and how I've changed and what I've done to change. And in addition to that, I was, I also experienced a tumor in my cervical spine just four years ago. I was on the table in Allegheny General Hospital, uh, not breathing on the table, but through my spiritual conviction, I uh, developed the strength to get through, and now I'm doing things that the doctor said I wouldn't do. But a lot of it is because, in addition to my diligence and my, my the discipline that I've acquired, and uh, just the attitude, attitude change that, that I have about my life, uh, I've been able I've been able to put myself in a position to be able to provide for my kids and my family. And I'm at a, at a pretty good point in my life. And I think that there are a lot of people that are just like myself that are looking for job opportunities that really haven't. Have, haven't had uh, violent crimes that have made bad decisions and, and bad choices in their lives and really deserve a second chance opportunity. And that's what we're working for. Basically, we're advocating for new legislation called Ban the Box, which would eliminate the criminal history inquiry off of, uh, off of all job application forms. That is not to say that, that employers don't deserve it to know the, the applicants, you know, the past criminal history of the applicants that, that, are, that, that are applying for the jobs. But we feel like at the beginning of the application stage for them to ask that question automatically eliminates so many people from, the, from having possibilities, from, job, from having job possibilities, or even be, being able to get an interview. Um, there are thousands of people who are aware that if they've, that they check that box, that they're automatically, they're automatically uh, discriminated against. So. Lots of people who have criminal histories won't even apply for jobs, knowing that that box is on is uh, is on the on the job job application forms. So we're endeavoring to to make sure that we can at least level the playing field of people who've had past criminal histories by allowing, hopefully, uh, getting them a chance to at least get in the door and explain what they've done with their lives since they've had criminal history, um, how they changed their lives, why they deserve a second chance, and and why they're good for the job. Um, the problem with the box is that it doesn't discriminate at all from minor criminal history that have occurred 20 years ago versus violent criminal history that, that, that happened last month. And people change, people grow, and uh, they need opportunities to be uh, self-sufficient, productive citizens. Uh, and without having a job opportunity, it's impossible. We've, we've also been meeting with city council members advocating and educating them about this legislation that, that we, we're, hoping to get, we're hoping to get proposed and passed in the city of Pittsburgh and doing whatever is necessary for them to feel comfortable about supporting this issue. In addition to that, we've, we've done grassroots work as well by holding workshops, as I mentioned before, uh, pardon me workshops and expungement workshops to educate people about the process of expungement and pardons. And in addition to that, to get additional support from people who have, who, who suffer from uh, criminal background 
uh, problems. We've, we've also went as far as is, is getting a legal opinion from a civil rights attorney because one of, the, one of the issues that some of the council members had was wondering whether this was legally doable or not. Uh, we've been able to ascertain the legal written opinion of, uh, again, a civil rights attorney supporting that uh, a home rule city such as Pittsburgh has the right to prohibit blanket discrimination in employment. Uh, in addition to that, we've been able to garner support from the ACLU, which also supports the fact that Pittsburgh as a home rule city is capable of prohibiting blanket discrimination from employment. Vanderbox not only, not only provides a person with an opportunity for employment, but there are, are lots of people who have gone through what I've gone through and have come out really diligent um, really disciplined and hungry for job opportunities and a lot of us make excellent employees as a result of our desire to, to right our wrongs and, and to be contributing uh, citizens to society. Um, in addition to that, the city of Pittsburgh and all jurisdictions that allow formerly convicted people to work will increase their tax base and consequently lower uh, crime rates and recidivism rates. We recognize that employers are not obligated to hire people formerly convicted, but if they do, it also gives uh, the city a better tax base, a larger tax base, because as opposed to paying for people to be incarcerated, we give the city an opportunity to increase its tax base. Um, it gives us a chance to provide for our families, which stops the trickle-down effect to our children. Uh, Band of Box is, is something that we feel is essential for people to grow. I mean, everybody, people, lot, people make mistakes, and everybody deserves a second chance opportunity, but without employment opportunities, uh, even, even the investments in reentry are, are wasted. But recently, Band of Box has been uh, passed in, in Philadelphia, which I was a part of uh, the lobbying for, for that bill to pass. In addition to that, it's been passed in several states, such as Massachusetts, Hawaii, and Minnesota, statewide. And there's been several cities uh, that have passed ban the box ordinances, allowing people opportunities to be employed. Pittsburgh is noted to be one of the best cities to live in in America. And I agree to, to the fact that it, it potentially has the ability to be that, but it should be that for all people. People that have had past criminal histories, that have turned their lives around, deserve second chance opportunities to be law-abiding, tax-paying, citizens and a lot of us are capable of being leaders in our in our communities as well as in this city. If you need more information about what Formerly Convicted Citizens Project is doing and want to support this effort, you can go to our website and I can also be contacted at this email address and this phone number. For those of us that are citizens of the city of Pittsburgh, it would be much appreciated if you would contact your city councilman and let them know that you support Man the Box and that you feel this is essential for our city.